Oh, hello. Greetings, viewer. How are you doing? Welcome to Full Record Jacket with Phil and Ben, who is hello. currently stuck in Mojo magazine by the looks of it. Is that is that the new Mojo? It's got to be, surely. It's got Squire uh, and April Gallagher. April 24, yeah, April 2024, yeah, yeah. I thought this would be more interesting than listening to you do the intro, Phil, so you carry on. I'll be back in a minute. Well, if, if you... I can't really can't really argue with that. It's I'm sure it's in more interesting. So we are viewer in 1992. Don't be fooled by ben, Ben's latest uh, very off the press 2024 edition of Mojo. It's 1992. Yeah, Liam Gallagher is. is unknown. John Squire is a legend, but the Stone Roses are not doing anything, and no, no one has heard of Chris Cross. Or have they? Or have they? Because <laughs> it's funny you mention Chris Cross, Philster. Because I'm beginning to think this early part of the 90s, hip-hop was the main driving force of greatness. And while I was in the gym the other day, I did indeed listen to Chris Cross, the full album. First time I've listened to it. And I've got to say... It really did make me jump, jump, because uh, Daddy Mac and Mac Daddy made me jump, jump. But yeah, it was a really good album, totally crossed out. It actually made me wonder why I never wore my jeans backwards, because I would have looked mega. So what's, I mean, I do I do remember the jump, jump thing. I can't yeah. say that I've heard it for a very, very, very long time. Um, are you telling me that the rest of the album has actually got stuff on it that is... Worth it's listening actually, to. Yes, it's actually, as a hip-hop album goes by two 12-year-olds, now I don't know how <laughs> much of it they actually wrote, um, but the follow-up single to Jump, uh, which was Warm It Up, Warm It Up, Chris, that's what I'm going to do. Warm It Up, Chris, that's what I was born to do, is um, is not a bad single. And I actually really enjoyed, I actually got to the end, and when you get to the end of your playlist on um, Spot Erfi, it obviously starts playing something else, and I was a little bit disappointed when it threw in. For some reason, I wasn't disappointed, but for some reason, my default track that it always goes to is Songbird. Com completely genre, you know, million genres apart from uh, Chris Cross. But um, yeah, Chris, I think Chris Smith and Chris Kelly, and I think it's Chris Smith um, that passed away, unfortunately. Well, they were both called Chris. Yeah, no, Chris Smith is still alive. Chris Kelly is the one that has passed away about four or five years ago. But oh yes, so um, they were both, they called, were both Chris. called Chris. Yeah. I didn't know that, and that's why they were called Chris Cross. You had Chris Daddy Mac Smith and Chris Daddy Mac Kelly. And did they do any more performing together after that first Flash of fame. I mean, I don't I'm know just, how long they lasted. I'm just having a look at their discography. I don't know why I'm asking so much about Criss Cross. Although, yeah, yeah. of course, I think I, I think I did see them at Michael Jackson's concert yes, in 1992. Yeah, yeah. It would have been 92. It would have been the year that they were the, the, the thing. Well, here we go. I'm loving a look. They did... Oh, God, I remember that. The warm it up. I tell you what. I don't know if you can see this. Well, you can I had that on CD single. That's the follow-up single to um, Jump. And it really made me want to park a coat. <laughs> Way before Liam Gallagher made me want to park a coat. Maybe, um, but yeah, maybe they... that's where he got the idea from. Well, poss quite, do you know what? Quite possibly. Um, let's have a look. They released a few EPs uh, through 93 to 95. Um, they then... They've released three albums, totally crossed out in 1992. Da Bomb in 1993. I don't know if it was Da Bomb or it just Da Bombed. <laughs> um, and then in 1996, so they would have been 16, they did Young, Rich and Dangerous. But if you look at them there, they don't look 16. They look they, a lot they <laughs> right, okay. Let's see if I can get that. Let's see if I can get a better picture of that. Um, so, yeah, so they did release some out. I think Chris Kelly has gone on to write um, more stuff. I think he wrote an album, more songs 
about his um, former uh, songster, as it were. Yeah, that. So that there would have been the time when they did Young, Rich, and Dangerous. And I don't know if it's because I'm getting up, but they're supposed to be 16 there. They look a lot older than 16. If they're walking into my off license, they are, they're getting served whatever they like. Because I won't even be asking for ID because they look a lot. Maybe just the touring and the fame got to them, really. So um, I'm just going to have a quick look at Chris Cross, Chris Cross, Chris Cross, Chris discography. I want to see if the if the bomb, the bomb went to number 13 in, well, their first album, which is one I've been listening to from 1992. Went to number one in the US on the um, album chart and the R&B chart. Only went to number 31 in this country. And their second album, Da Bomb, Da Bombed in this country because it didn't chart or wasn't released. And um, went to number 13 in America, which I I suppose isn't bad, number 13 in America. So uh, I'm just trying to see what the critics gave it. Oh, it got massive by NME. Three out of ten, the bomb. So the bomb did bomb. So I can't say I'm entirely surprised. So there you go, viewer. That's the lowdown on Chris Cross. You don't need to ever look them up on Why YouTube not? or Google yeah, ever you again. You do. You need to. You do need to look them up. They're worth. They're worth. They're fun. They're worth having to listen to anyway. So anyway, yeah. So I did Chris Cross. Um, I wasn't doing any jumping in the gym. Uh, let me just go back into my search, and I can tell you what else I was listening. Oh, you listen to um, an anti-gym track uh, album, as you would call it, because it's not oh, gym what? music. I listened. Uh, it oh, wasn't sorry, gym yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was thinking um, of gym. Net- yeah, okay. Uh, I listened to Morris's uh, "Your Arsenal" album. It's certainly. Um... Not what people would generally think of as gym music, is it, Morris? No, but no, no. There's a bit of bit of tempo on that album, though, isn't there? It's a bit, little bit yeah. rockabilly. Yeah. It, the thing I always find with Morris's solo stuff, because his voice is so defined, I find it hard sometimes to differentiate between Morris's solo and it just being a Smith song. If you know what I mean, it's quite. I don't know what you he, mean because he his voice is so dominant, really, to the Smiths' sound. Yeah, yeah, he, he, yeah. Even though there were three great musicians in the Smiths and they did have their own sound, um, he, it's kind of so dominated by him and his personality and his lyrics that uh, they it, do sometimes hard blend to tell into them one. Apart. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't mind that. I don't. A lot of people rate your Arsenal as one of his better albums. Didn't probably enjoy it as much as Viva Hate, possibly. And what's the one I said to you I enjoyed more? We Are The Quarry. I think I enjoyed that a little bit more. But I did, you I did enjoy quarry. it. Yeah. Well, you Are The Quarry, yes. Yeah, it was Last of the Gang to Die. I think that's got on it, hasn't it? So That's got the one about America as well, hasn't it? It's the yeah, early, yeah. early 2000s album. Yeah. yeah, about 2004? I think that's... After that. I think that's correct, yeah. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, so I listened to to that. I enjoyed that. I I wouldn't say, apart from that, what was that spin thing I listened to? Soda, stream, whatever it was, Um, the other week. um, There's not been anything I've listened to and thought, oh, that's awful so far. It's hard for me at the moment to find a defining album um, of the 90s. 1992 genre. Um, but then I went and listened to Ride Going Blank again. And I sort of looked at that through a different set of, you know, papers. Yeah. And I actually quite enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the Ride album. I, it's, the lyrics, I'll give it one thing musically brilliant. Lyrically, some of the tracks are awful. Apps, but then you can't really hear the lyrics. So what do the lyrics actually matter? But some of the lyrics were diabolical, which I couldn't really hear them anyway. So I was more into the atmospherics of it. So um, which they so, did very well. They so did. In terms of the yeah. in terms of the words, you just leave them all behind. Yes, I like what you did there, Philster. I like this. I like it when you throw these little Easter eggs in. So yeah, so I listened to Ride. 
And do you know what? That is, lyrically, thingy aside, that is teetering near my top three, that album. Maybe you'll get to like the lyrics if you hear it a bit more. Maybe they'll just just endear themselves to you. I don't... The thing is, Phil, as you know, I have written a lot of lyrics in my time. Uh, yeah, kind of. Some, of the, some of them... You know when you've written a... You know, you just write it for the sake of writing it. To get that idea out, to hopefully inspire more ideas. And reading through these, they just... Yeah, they didn't... Yeah. Maybe it's better that you can't hear them. Maybe that's the whole point of it. Not it's not Leonard Cohen or Bob Dylan or No, no, no. But an album I did listen to and we discussed them last week. And I think you listened to it as well. An album that is challenging my top three. And it's possibly in my top three at the moment because I put it on and it's quite easy to listen to. And I didn't have to think too much about it. Um I know what you're going to say. Is, is it, let me guess. Let me guess. Now, you, you came on this video talking yeah. about Criss Cross, okay? Yeah. Which most people would think had completely destroyed all of your musical credibility. But then you've you've regained it by talking about Morrissey and Ride. Yeah. yeah. And for my 1992 listening this week, you know, you considering you came in, started off with Criss Cross, you were beating me by the end because... I've been listening after our discussion last week to Bon Jovi, which doesn't make me That's cool in any way. Well. So I thought that was the same album. So we both listened to Keep the Faith. Is that what we've been having on? Yes, yes. I did listen to Keep the Faith, yeah. Now, I must say that, um, as, you, as you know, I've, I've never really been against Bon Jovi. They just do their thing and they do yeah. it. And um, I don't mind enjoying a little bit of that kind of, you know, that kind of American rock music, I I can quite enjoy it. Um, I thought this album was was pretty good actually for what they yeah, do. Yeah, there's a I think there's a couple couple of tracks towards the end. I was a bit well, you can tell they're filler tracks. I didn't mind. I didn't mind it. There was one called. Was there one called "Blaming on the Love of Rock and Roll," which is a typical That's it, yeah, you know, second it kind of, to last track. Of, yeah, it kind of sounds like you'd expect it to sound. Yeah, and it's yeah. just a bit of fun. And then the closing track I thought wasn't bad. It was a bit like a sort of a, a bit of a I think jam. It was the but... I Want You song and Fear, I think I wasn't too sold on. If you're wondering where I'm wearing this cap, it's because this is underneath. I haven't done my head. I'm just now trying to work. Do you reckon I should go for that? Do I look cool like that? What do you reckon like that? That's That'll more do. 90s, isn't it? That's more Bart Simpson. Yeah. So I think I could go yeah. for the Bart Simpson sort of. Sorry, Philster. I think. The title song "Keep the Faith" works well. It's a bit of a keep different thing for them, wasn't it? It's was a bit of a different. You gotta keep the faith. Different kind keep of drum pattern and that kind of thing. And yes, I think yeah, yeah. what the outstanding song for me on there, and not just because it's nearly ten minutes long, but I think it's a good one. That's "Dry County." Yes, it's kind of like one. yeah, it's kind of like an extended version of living on a prayer in a way isn't it yeah, sort of, yeah, it's like yeah. living on a prayer turned into a big epic 70s rock song yeah uh, and going into sort of springsteen territory lyrically there was a song on yeah. there that reminded me of you too and i can't remember which song it was did you get a um i i sensed very much a sort of springsteen springsteen country you could you could yeah hear the roots of country in it couldn't you there's there's a they went a little bit more towards sort of mainstream country and the springsteen influence comes a bit more to the fore and there's not as much of the um 80s what would you call it hair metal or whatever yeah, it, was, yeah. it was known as um uh, not quite so much of that so they did well at that time to kind of respond to the change in in american rock music at that point yeah. with alternative Talk, music talking of country yeah um I was at my mother's the other day, went round for a cup of tea and some hot cross buns. I bought the hot cross buns because that's the kind of son I am, Phil. And she she said to me, as she always does, oh, your show is the best show on YouTube. It's the greatest thing ever. And I think you should be on TV. Don't know about the other fella like. He's a bit useless. And I was like, oh, mum, don't be cruel. He's got a name. And she's like, what is it? And I was like, something. I don't know. Um. Anyway, she said, oh, you should do more country. And I was like, yeah, maybe. 
I was brought up on country and western. My dad was a big country and western fan. But um, I said to her I'd look into it. I'd have word of management on the whole country thing. It's a big big genre, though, isn't it? You can go way back. Yeah, yeah. We could do, you know, you could go back to the old um, old stuff from the 40s and 50s, bluegrass. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy oh, Rogers. she did remember your name, though, Dave, so don't worry about that. Really? That's, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks, yeah. thanks, Lynn. Yeah, yeah. I did really enjoy the Bon Jovi album though because I didn't have to think too hard. Because I think when you put a Bon Jovi album on, you could put one on from '92, you could put one on from '97, and you could probably put one on from the mid 2000s. And you know what you're going to get? You know it's going to be Bon Jovi. They're not trying yeah, to. Much. Yeah, yeah, they're not trying to change genres and rewrite the, you know. No, I haven't listened to all of these albums, so I wouldn't know for sure. But from, I gather from hearing their stuff on the radio that that's what they've done. They've just gone a little bit more towards the sort of country Springsteen, yeah, yeah, Tom well, Petty era, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, well, their latest single, Legendary, I think I said it on the last show, was it does remind me very much of kind of modern day matchbox 20 how they've kind of gone because they started off i wouldn't say bon jovi yes but similar sort of vein power ballads that sort of stuff and um now we're in that sort of rock pop sort of bit which is not bad i quite like the new um, matchbox 20 album i mean others may disagree which is their right no. to they shouldn't i know where they will no. live though i did quite enjoy the Bon Jovi album for what it was. I don't I don't think it's going to make my top three. But I really don't know what my top three is going to be. See, for me, the far side is definitely in there, I think. And I can't not choose Dr. Dre's The Chronic um, because I think that's a really great album. So it's between, at the moment, for me, that third spot is between Bon Jovi, Ride, Tori Amos and Criss Cross. Depending on what I listen to this week, because we've still got another week to go of 1992. We have got a whole week of 92 to go. And I must admit, it's one of those where there's a lot of albums that are good, but yeah. you don't necessarily think, wow, this is so fantastic. It's got to be in my no, top three. No, and that's three. the trouble I've had. Yeah, nothing has sort of yeah, grabbed me by good. the... Yeah, nothing has tried to extra grab me by the knackers. Something that makes me think it's one of my favourite albums of all time. Yeah, but Unless that's you know just what? me on 1992. It probably is. No, no, because I'm I in the same it, boat as well. I don't know whether you can still hear me, but I'm afraid I can't this, hear you um, at all. And you've gone completely frozen on my frozen screen. On my I guess screen. the system's still it's recording, re and you're probably connect. still there. Make sure you have a stable Still completely visible connection. to the viewer. Oh, but hello, I'm, I'm back. Oh, it, I, just, I just heard the word connection. I'm back. We're I mean, back. We're back in the room. I think I've padded enough for time. But I was going to say, 1992 might be hard because there's that lack of, I wouldn't say quality, but lack of standout. It's going to get harder for 93 onwards. Yeah, although it might be easier for me to pick my top three from those years. 92 is just a weird one for me. From what? From 1993? I think we're suffering more <laughs> technical issues on this front. Phil has gone. To be fair, what he is saying right now is the most important things he's ever said, which is nothing because he's frozen. I don't know if he can hear me. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm just talking to myself. I'm alone <laughs> in a box, just sitting here. Just sitting here. Thing oh, is, you're back. You're back. I was, I was about to interject because I, I, I was hearing you the whole time. I think oh. the software we use is pretty good at recording everything that we do, but sometimes yeah. we don't see everything that's going on sometimes every now and again someone goes a little bit blurry and yeah. very occasionally we freeze but i don't think we freeze for the viewer oh cool is my hand moving it's moving yeah cool. it's blur blurry but it's moving well they're coming up in 93 ain't they 93 94 that's when we're gonna get into that's when britain starts fighting back yeah well 
we have one more week of 92 to go. So we will carry on our 92 listening, rushing towards the end of the month, and then you'll find out what those top threes are. But in the meantime, viewer, with all that information on Criss Cross, what more could you want? Join us for another one very soon. <laughs>